hope your week is off to a good start. I'm Min San Hee with our panel of foreign journalists. Welcome to the show. Good to be back. Thanks. Much has been taking place in this part of the world. What are some of the developments that you've been following? We'll start with you, Frank. Well, I've been off for a couple of weeks, but uh, I've been following from a distance, of course, the increasing rhetoric between uh, North Korea and the United States, that the comments from, from Donald Trump especially that have uh, brought about uh, quite a bit of criticism of the, the American president. If he does anything with respect to Guam or any place else that's an American territory, or an American ally, he will truly regret it. And then what we're seeing, I guess, is a little bit of drawdown of that tension with North Korea seemingly blinking and saying that they're gonna reconsider uh, some of the sort of, I guess, provocations that they had proposed to make uh, toward the United States. Right, Koichi, what have you been following? Uh, yes, same, just, you know, Kim Jong-un claimed that uh, uh, he will wait and see before he make decision to, how can I say, launch the full missile to U.S. territory, territory Guam. One of my friends went to uh, North Korea last week and come back like Friday and we had a conversation and he told me that, uh, you know, they are kind of relaxed and there, is, there are no tension in Pyongyang and Lassan. So I think, well, this is kind of what to word game, it looks like. A war of words, then. Yeah. I see. Yes, what about you, Don? Well, we've all been following the same thing. It's just interesting what you just said, the relaxing in Pyongyang, because we kind of feel relaxed in Seoul, too. Uh, in fact, uh, people in the States uh, say, well, aren't you afraid to be back in Seoul? Something could happen. And, and I say, you don't get that sense here at all. Uh, very different uh, mood and atmosphere. Uh, Right now, uh, it would seem that the point of crisis has passed, but not really because military exercises involving thousands of American and South Korean troops. And um, I think we can be pretty sure that we're, we'll be hearing a lot more from Pyongyang now. Whether they'll fire a missile uh, is not clear. I don't think they'll be firing a missile in the direction of Guam, but they could be firing a missile and we could have uh, a lot of rhetoric uh, coming up very soon. Right. And staying with North Korea, the uh, new administration has been actively working to rein in tensions on the peninsula amid the latest developments here in this part of the world. In this edition of Foreign Correspondence, we take a look at some of the more notable achievements made by the new administration during its first 100 days and at some of the tasks that remain ahead. On August 17th, the Moon Jae-in administration marked its first 100 days in office. Given the presidential vacancy back in May, the new administration was inaugurated into office without a transition team on the 10th of that month. The public's assessment of the first 100 days of the new administration has been generally positive. The evidence is President Moon Jae-in's approval rating, which stands at over 70%. According to one survey, President Moon's high approval rating can be linked to his communication initiatives. Taking selfies with members of the public, embracing the family of the May 18th Gwangju democratization movement, having beer with top business leaders, these are all unprecedented interactions. His method of interaction is said to be refreshing. Moreover, pledges to eradicate corruption have also contributed to the high approval rating of the new administration. With the 100-point national agenda that was announced this past July, the first task the Moon Jae-in administration looked to tackle was the thorough and complete eradication of corruption. In addition, there was a positive response for the administration's strong desire to create jobs. Immediately after his inauguration, President Moon's first order was the establishment of a job committee. President Moon pledged that he would take the role of the head of the committee and secure a supplementary budget of about 11 trillion won for job creation. Joseph Kim 
했습니다. 이를 지속시키고 발전시켜 나가는 게 문재인 정부의 정부가 기꺼이 짊어질 소명입니다. 100 days have passed since the new administration took office. We now take a look at what has been achieved so far. 프랑스는 following the turmoil of the uh, impeachment of uh, former President Baca and Hay and the corruption scandal that enveloped the country last fall. That, I feel, is the most important accomplishment. It's right. interesting that his poll numbers are holding pretty steady. I think, believe he had, you know, 70% and maybe a little bit more approval rating after, his, uh, after he became president. Now, whether that will last, uh, we don't know. Uh, North Korea uh, has not been insulting him as, it, as, as North Korean rhetoric did insult uh, his predecessor, Park Geun-hye, whom they used, about whom they used very bad language. But I, I think they may be a little disappointed that he's, not, uh, that he's still professing uh, total support for the U.S.-Korean alliance and that he's uh, very strongly condemning North Korea's nuclear and missile program and uh, that he's... Uh, making overtures to talk to North Korea, North Korea is not responding to these overtures, which is uh, disturbing in itself. So, uh, you know, uh, we have a long way to go. Uh, this could just be a honeymoon period. Uh, it could just be, uh, we could go through another few months or another year. Right. Don just talked about his uh, President Moon Jae-in's approval rating standing at 70%. What do you think which is the reason behind this high popularity? Well, I think, well, first is his, his openness, communication skill, and second one is he it looks like much focus on common people, ordinary people, and he, his economic policy is also focusing on that. I, I think that, that's the biggest reason why. We've been talking about this uh, from the start, his interactions with the public, with the press, with uh, leaders of the corporate world, it's been quite um, radical, quite different from those of previous um, administrations. What comes to mind when you think about his interaction with the public? Something that you remember, something that you thought was quite um, uh, notable, remarkable? Well, actually, it's not really something that it has to do with specifically with his interactions with the public, but I think it has to do with his value system and, and where he came from. If you look at, look at Lee Myung-bak and Bak Geun-hye, Lee Myung-bak may have come from humble circumstances, but he became a, a CEO of a of a, a you know fairly large company or a leader in a in a fairly large company, part of the chaebol that that really uh, Moon Jae-in has his sights set on to to you know draw down a bit and 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 rein in the corruption between uh, government and and big business. And there was a a picture taken when he was at an event, and it was a photograph of his shoes. Uh, taken from behind, and he was wearing fairly worn-out shoes at the time. And for me, it was the, the, the shoes that told me a different value system that this president had uh, in, in comparison to, to the two presidents that preceded him. It will be really interesting, though, to see if he can reign in the Chebo. This is an ongoing, this happens with every administration. No president has really succeeded. Uh, certainly uh, his predecessor didn't succeed at all. She did say that she was going to reign in the chaebol. And in fact, by the time she was finished, she was very much uh, you know, in collusion with the chaebol. One of the reasons she's in jail. So will President uh, Moon be able to, uh, to really counter the chaebol issue? Uh, so far, uh, I don't see too many signs of that. But uh, it'll be very interesting and maybe even exciting to see what he does do. Right, because he has pledged to root out corruption. Koichi, how well is this initiative going in your opinion? At the press conference, well, he's, he also said that about, he's not targeting 
specific people about this, you know, issue. 특정 사건에 대한 어, 조사와 처벌 또 특정 세력에 대한 어, 어떤 조사 처벌 이런 것이 적폐 청산의 목표라고 생각하지 않습니다. I think he he's what he was trying to say at the press conference was he was he want to create a fair society by creating fair society this kind of uh, bad thing will disappear and well it's kind of persuasive and i think what i felt was very modest uh, way of thinking another thing he said at, at the news conference in regards to to reigning in the the corruption of chable with uh, big business was he wasn't just targeting one or two companies he said that this is an ongoing effort to end and sever the collusion between uh, big business and government in South Korea. I think that the corruption is a very unfortunate and unfortunate and unfortunate and unfortunate and it remains to be seen then. Opposition parties um, have accused President Moon Jae-in of resorting to populism. What are your thoughts on this, Frank? Uh, well, I think I, I, would, I would have to agree with that uh, to a certain extent. I mean, his, his sort of, some would call it flip-flopping on Thad as an example of that how after the most recent provocations from North Korea, he, he suggested that uh, the US and South Korea negotiate on, on bringing in the other four launchers, on, on deploying them. Um, but, you know, the president should speak to and represent uh, his, you know, voters, those that voted for him, perhaps most, but, but he's, he's also said that he'll represent those that, that didn't vote for him. In uh, this next report, we explore some of the tasks that lie ahead for the Moon administration, including North Korea's nuclear ambitions. During the past 100 days, the Moon Jae-in administration has announced and implemented a number of policies. But there are nonetheless challenges that the new administration has yet to tackle. A major challenge is North Korea. Starting with the launch of an intermediate-range ballistic missile four days after President Moon Jae-in's inauguration, North Korea has fired seven missiles as of the end of July. In addition, North Korea and the United States are involved in a heated war of words, with North Korea threatening to strike Guam, a U.S. territory. <laughs> As the conflict between North Korea and the U.S. deepens, tensions on the Korean peninsula have escalated. President Moon has demanded a calm and responsible response from the United States, while demanding North Korea stop provocations and its belligerence. 북한은 더 이상 상황을 악화시키지 말고 도발과 위협적 언행을 즉시 중단할 것을 촉구합니다. 미국 역시 현재의 사태에 대해 우리와 같은 기조로 냉정하고 책임 있게 대응할 것이라 확신합니다. 한반도의 평화는 무력으로 오지 않습니다. Another challenge for the Moon Jae-in administration is diplomatic conflict. At the end of June, President Moon resumed diplomatic interactions with a Korea-US summit which came less than two months after he took office. In addition, at the G20 summit, the Moon administration presented the new Berlin Declaration, which included plans for peace on the Korean Peninsula and efforts to facilitate international cooperation in solving the issue. However, Seoul's relationship with China, which has been strained by the Thar deployment issue, remains unresolved. At the recently held ASEAN Regional Security Forum, the Chinese Foreign Ministry took issue with the Moon Jae-in administration's decision to temporarily deploy additional THAAD launchers. In addition, the gap between Korea and Japan on the Korea-Japan Sex Slaves Agreement, which was concluded by the previous administration, remains to be bridged. 
the Moon Jae-in administration has nonetheless reaffirmed its commitment to resolving these issues. We've discussed this a couple of times in our previous episodes, but uh, the new administration uh, has a two-track policy regarding North Korea, the use of carrots and sticks. Given the latest developments, Frank, do you believe there needs to be a shift in this policy? I don't think there can be a shift. Oddly enough, you know, I consider it uh, Moon Jae-in trying to have his cake and eat it too in terms of his policy toward North Korea. Um, it's, it's becoming increasingly difficult for him, I think, to suggest that he and President Donald Trump have the same policy toward North Korea, particularly given Donald Trump's incendiary threats toward Pyongyang recently. You know, he, his, his preference certainly, and he's demonstrated this and said this before, is for engagement with Pyongyang. Now the bar has kind of shifted to what is required for engagement. The U.S. previously had called for some type of measures from North Korea before that they would negotiate with North Korea. There have been ongoing provocations. Now the South Korean president is saying, as long as there are not more missile tests and nuclear tests, the path toward negotiations is open. Previously, the U.S. wanted much more than that. They wanted some other statements or moves from the North Korean government to abandon uh, its nuclear weapons programs. But I think that, you know, from my, my personal opinion is that that should be enough to negotiate. Negotiations should be unconditional in, in trying to seek a resolution to this problem. The trouble with unconditional negotiations, of course, is that they all, they have, they're by, almost by definition conditional because North Korea is not going to negotiate an end to its nuclear and missile program. So there won't be any seriously unconditional negotiations. Another problem is that North Korea seems to be waiting for some significant positive sign from South Korea. Uh, they got these exercises coming up. Uh, President Moon has reaffirmed the strength of the U.S.-Korean alliance. North Korea wants to see some weakening of this alliance. They want to see some uh, backing down from exercises, if not cancellation of them, at least uh, softening of them. Uh, I think President Trump uh, is already backing down. I think he's agreeing with President Moon that uh, we're not going to do anything without your approval. And I don't think he may have said, he may have talked about fire and fury and the other term was locked and loaded, ready to fire at North Korea. But uh, now that North Korea has backed off from the Guam threat, I think that uh, President Trump is, is uh, searching for some common ground with South Korea so that they can present a united front with South Korea. Uh, so, uh, and I don't think North Korea is going to like that either. Uh, so I don't think, uh, I think it's going to be very hard to bring about negotiations. It may happen, but uh, I don't think they're going to be unconditional. Mm. Within the criticism of the new uh, government by opposition parties is the reality that they believe, the opposition parties believe that the new administration is not taking a front role with the issue of North Korea, that it's not even taking a passenger seat, it's decided to take a back seat with regard to tensions on the peninsula. In what ways perhaps could Seoul, South Korea, take a leading role in issues here on the peninsula then? If I go back to President Moon's policy, I think he's doing well because he's trying to maintain good relationship with the United States. This is very key, uh, on the contrary uh, of what people usually think. You know, North Korean criticize North Korea criticize South Korea when South Korea is close to US, but actually if South Korea and US relationship is good, North Korea will try to persuade US through uh, South Korea. So that's why uh, South and North dialogue become meaningful. So Moon Jae-in administration is understanding this logic. That's why he's getting close, trying to cl be closer to U.S. and you know, do putting pressure along with U.S. It, it, they think you know it's better for uh, South-North relationship in the long run. Mm. Uh, debates surrounding the deployment of Thad has been fierce, like Don mentioned earlier. How do you see this issue unfolding? in the future? I think that much too much is made of that, frankly. I, I just think that issue is not as, uh, as uh, important as it's made out to be. Uh, the U.S. has plenty of bombers around here, strategic bombers. That they have air base at Osan and Kunsan. So I don't think, and that is just one element in this huge defensive strategy. 
Another big problem surrounding Thad is the Chinese reaction. The Chinese just don't like it at all. But what threat does Thad really pose to China? Okay, they have some super radar which can apparently tell what the Chinese are doing, but so what? What are the Chinese gonna do? Who are they firing at? They're not gonna start firing missiles and long-range artillery. They don't wanna go into war here either. They want stability. I think Don's, Don's mention of, Korea, of, of sorry, China's uh, reservations about that is probably the most important aspect of it. It has had a devastating effect on, on South Korea's uh, tourism uh, revenue. Uh, at, at the same time, uh, for the Chinese, it, it might represent something of you know, reverse mission creep in which if you allow that and you don't, you don't exhibit any reservations to it, what's next? It's, it's clear to some analysts that, that that really is aimed at, at containing China and its ambitions in the South China Sea as it gets a seagoing navy. You know, China's military spending is high. It has the largest, I believe, standing army in the world. So uh, that, as it poses a, a sort of containment uh, toward, toward China, I, I think that's the most serious, serious part of it. I see. How do you foresee Seoul's uh, ties with uh, Washington in the future? I mean, during summit talks uh, in late June, early July, the two presidents um, reaffirmed their alliance, but they failed to see eye to eye on the uh, free trade deal with President Trump calling for a revamp of the entire agreement. Um, what are your thoughts? How well, do you that see? Could be, that could be a real problem, of course, the Korea-US FTA free trade agreement. Uh, President Trump has made clear he doesn't like Chorus any more than he likes other agreements. He, he's criticizing NAFTA, and he totally nixed, killed the uh, U.S. participation in TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, I don't know that the U.S. wants to go to the wall on that with South Korea, uh, but uh, they could get back to that, and that could be a, quite a serious issue. The U.S. is going to be demanding, well, some revision in Chorus and some opening and further opening, uh, removal of non-tariff barriers. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to resolve course very easily, and it could be quite a serious problem. I do, however, think that a lot of dipl diplomatic negotiations will somehow paper over the cracks and that we won't have a, a break, a serious rift between the U.S. and South Korea over course. But we'll, we'll be hearing a lot more about course in the next, uh, well, for the remainder of the Trump administration anyway. Already you've seen Moon Jae-in take on a strategy of delaying any renegotiating of that, suggesting it would have to go through the National Assembly and setting up uh, some type of committee to analyze uh, how to renegotiate uh, the Chorus Free Trade Agreement. So I think that uh, that sort of stalling, again, will, will prevent uh, any serious rift between Washington and Seoul over the FTA. Maybe we, we should watch NAFTA issue, just dealing, deal with how, how they deal with Mexico and Canada first, then, you know, if uh, somehow it went a uh, rational way, then South Korea doesn't have to worry about it, maybe. Right, that's something that we'll have to wait and see. Right. Well, um, this is probably going to be the last question. So we're here today talking about uh, President Moon Jae-in's uh, first 100 days in office and of some of the tasks that he's achieved and those that remain to be tackled. Um, do you have any words that you would like to share with the new administration before we end the program today? We'll start with you, Frank. Keep up the good work. I, I think his, his, his approval ratings with the public reflect the job that he's doing. I don't think it's just the, the people that voted for him. He only got 40% of the, of the vote and his approval ratings are, are, have maintained a level over 70%. So I think uh, he just needs to, to keep on the track that he's on and, and he'll, be, he'll be fine. What about you, Koichi? Um, well, my, my favorite uh, President Moon Jae-in's policy is what income-led growth policy. It's about you know creating achieving economic growth by creating jobs and raising uh, minimum wages. And I don't know if it's, it really works, but if it works, then I think Japan can learn quite a lot from that policy. So I'm quite expected uh, what is going to happen on that policy. What about you, Don? Well, I hope the honeymoon lasts for the rest of his presidency. Uh, certainly he's looking good now. Uh, I think he's, by, by modulating his policy toward North Korea, keeping up a strong U.S. alliance, keeping a firm view of North Korea's nuclear missile program, but 
uh, being very open to dialogue and, and reconciliation and negotiations. That certainly, uh, certainly uh, would, uh, I would hope that would endure and in fact bring some results. Right. Well, at his inauguration, President uh, Moon Jae-in pledged to be remembered as a successful leader by both his people and by history. Now, his approval rating indicates that his first few steps are in the right direction and we hope the rest of his journey will follow the same path. Thank you for watching.